Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're looking at this Omega Seamaster Aquaterra Coaxial Chronograph. You can see this 44 millimeter stainless steel Aquaterra Chronograph on our website, watchyouwant.com. Purchase it there, and if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. You can also click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time to see our full listing for this watch, with accessories included, additional high resolution images, and of course, complete pricing information. Now, on my wrist, 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. You can see that this is a large timepiece, 44 millimeters across the round of the case, not including the rectangular pushers and the crown. It's a big watch, and in terms of thickness, it's large, but perhaps not overbearing. 14 millimeters in thickness, this one's actually more compatible with a tight sleeve or dress cuff, thanks to that generously sloped conical bezel. Now, from lug to lug, it's actually a bit more compact than the raw dimensions of the round case would suggest, as the measurement is approximately 51 millimeters lug to lug, so the span isn't overbearing. If you have a smaller wrist that's narrow across the top, this is actually a good choice among larger watches. Now the heft is impressive, and just as impressive as the heft is the integration of this gorgeous combination alligator leather and calfskin strap. Now it's a beautiful matte finish alligator leather on top. The matte finish is special because it's rarely seen. Generally, alligator is shiny or not at all. Here the mat is gorgeous and it's combined with a beautiful sculpting of the strap itself. This is in contrast to simple bolstering in that it actually helps the strap to fill the gap of the lugs and it takes the shape of a lug insert. So if you've seen conforming straps that simply abut the case and do so with very little sensitivity to the form of the lugs or the flow of the case or the transition aesthetically from case to lug to strap. This is the opposite of that. The sculpting is beautiful, the bolstering is substantial, and you can see in profile how it helps the visual transition from strap to lug. One thing I will say though is that it doesn't fight the curvature of your wrist. When you have conforming end piece bracelets or straps that are pinned against the flank of a case, sometimes the strap doesn't want to bend down around the curve of a smaller wrist. This one is surprisingly amenable to the curve of my 16 centimeter wrist, and I think down to even 14 and a half centimeters, you're going to be able to wear this watch very securely with comfort with this strap. And in any case, you're going to enjoy this twin trigger deployment clasp. Now, twin trigger, so it's a positive release or not at all. Not friction fit, it's not going to pop open accidentally. And inside, you have a clever minder system whereby any excess slack is tucked in underneath the clasp so that there are no unsightly strap minder loops on the strap to prematurely wear down. Now, the deck of the watch, and it is a deck, is really its centerpiece. Omega debuted the teak deck concept in the Aquaterra collection in 2008, and essentially the Aquaterra, a uh, upscale Seamaster that in many ways took over for the Seamaster 120 historically, is a watch that you can wear in the water, 150 meter water resistance after all, but it's also a watch that's well suited to formal occasions, sort of a surf and turf Seamaster, if you will, and that's why the teak deck concept is perhaps more leisure and luxury oriented than the wave patterns and the gloss styles of the Planet Oceans and the 300 meters. Now you can see it's got a gorgeous ivory or off-white color. It really is reminiscent of a bleached teak deck on a yacht. The definition and the detail here is superb. You can see not only the vertical striations of the teak deck, but the beautiful applied Omega corporate name and marquee logo. You can see the depth and the luster of those fully loomed, polished dart indices marking the hours. And then there is a metallic seconds track running outboard of the teak deck design. Each of the sub-registers is beautifully countersunk with a railroad chapter ring and Everything about the watch just speaks to a sensibility of elegance and luxury. This is, in many ways, the Omega that most directly competes in terms of spirit with Rolex's Yachtmaster. And on the case back, the Omega Caliber 3313. Now this is a remarkable coaxial automatic caliber, 37 joules, based on a Frédéric Piguet 1285 Bausch. Now it does operate at a higher frequency than the Piguet 1185, with which it's commonly confused. This one's thicker, it's a bit more durable than the 1185, it operates at 4 hertz, not 3. It features a 52 hour power reserve, not 40. Now you can also see, when I expose the balance for your viewing pleasure, that it's also free sprung for a little bit more durability built in and resistance to shock induced timing variation. Of course, with the Daniels coaxial escapement, it does have a bit of a 
prestigious link to independent horology and the late George Daniels. There's a lot to love about this movement, especially the fact that you have a 150 meter watch with a sapphire display case back, by no means ordinary. Moreover, if you are into such things, the engagement mechanism of this watch of Piguet slash Blancpain origin is a column wheel vertical clutch tandem. So you have the smoothness of a vertical clutch when engaging, stopping and starting the chronograph. There's no unsightly jump to the hands. It also resets precisely to 12 every time because there is no play within a lateral clutch train. It simply doesn't have one. Finally, you have the crisp tactile feedback and the auditory click of a column wheel function selector. And because there is no additional wear and tear on a lateral clutch drivetrain, if you prefer to simply leave the chronograph engaged for center seconds to match the broad arrow minutes and the large alpha style loomed hours, you can do that and have hours, minutes, and seconds at center. Pull the crown, it does hack the balance for precise synchronization to a reference time. And the watch does have a quick set function for the movement such that the date at 4.30 can quickly be reset during irregular length months or should the watch run down. You can see this remarkably versatile 44 millimeter Omega Seamaster Aquaterra Teak Deck Chronograph on our website, watchyouwant.com.